Today we're going to talk about the flintlock fusel. This is a fusel. It's a smooth bore and it can uh, be loaded with ground ball, swan shot, which is uh, equivalent to modern day buckshot, and bird shot, or any combination of two of these together. Popular calibers in the 18th century were 24 gauge and 20 gauge. This one's a 20 gauge. That makes it a .62 calibre. With a gun like this, being so versatile, then you can hunt anything from rabbit to buffalo. It's, uh, it's a good gun to have. This one, although it may look a little like a half stock, is in fact a full stock with a longer barrel. The barrel on this is 42 inches long and instead of having a wooden ramrod this one has a metal ramrod which I uh, which I fitted myself. Okay um, I think I covered most of the things that is needed for a flint lock in the uh, in the video on the shot pouch. Uh, but just a, a quick recap: if you want fast ignition on a flint lock, then you need a pan brush and you need a, a vent pick. Okay. A vent pick is for making sure that the vent is clear. And what it's got to be clear of is gunpowder. If gunpowder seeps into the vent from the main charge, then it will slow the ignition. Because the flame has to burn through powder in the vent to get to the main charge. Sort of like a fuse. It may only take seconds but it will slow it down. So if you make sure that's clear. That's the other thing that quills can be used for. A vent quill. If you put a vent quill in there when you load okay, from the muzzle then the powder won't get in there in the first place. It won't seep into the vent. Okay, and once you've loaded, you can take the quill out and you can prime the pan. Okay. The brush is for brushing out the pan after you fired the gun. You get some black powder residue in the pan. Sweep that out. And on the hammer, wipe it over. If you've got some cloth, use the cloth. If you haven't got cloth and your shirt sleeve's down, use your shirt sleeve. If you can't do that, at least wipe it off with a dry thumb. Okay? And that will help ensure you get a good spark. The flint must be sharp. Okay? So if you're going out hunting with it, always check that that flint is sharp. Some people replace that flint automatically put a new flint in each time they go out but of course that depends on how much it's actually been used but uh, yeah the flint has to be sharp if you do all that clean the pan make sure the vent is clear wipe over the hammer face or steel face make sure you've got a sharp flint the ignition timing on one of these will be about as fast as you will get on a percussion. So close you, you won't notice the difference. Um, if you see some of the shots, the night shots, um, at the beginning of this video you'll see just how quickly it does go off. Okay, As soon as you hear the clack, basically, of the uh, flint 
hitting the steel, that's it. The gun goes off. Now, I've had some, uh, some feedback from somebody telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about. And uh, I'm not using the, great, the correct names for the pieces on here. Um, I am using the correct names for parts of this, this lock. It's just that modern names have sneaked in today and, uh, and it makes it pretty confusing. This part that holds the flint is called the cock. This steel that also covers the pan is called a hammer. The reason it was called a hammer was that an earlier style a flintlock had a different type of steel and it looked more like a hammer and that name just stuck and it's still there today. So that <coughs> is the uh, is the flintlock fusel. <coughs>